This frame was sent to me by Ronan FPV in exchange for a review. No money has exchanged hands and no one has had approval on what I say or do in this video. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So it, this day and age we're living in, the sub 250 category really got popular and now it seems like it's kind of like dying out a little bit, but the idea of sub 250 is still there and the requirements from certain governments, you know, it's still sub 250 grams for some arbitrary reason. But some of the sub 250 quads that I've seen are just not good. Uh, they're heavy, they're overbuilt, and they don't leave you a whole lot of room uh, like to add a GoPro or anything like that. Um, and I've flown plenty of sub 250 quads like, uh, like this. This is the 533 Tiny Trainer. Uh, this one here, this one, this one I really like. This is the, uh, the Baby Hawk HD. And then uh, we've got other offerings like uh, that aren't Bynum flies, like uh, like this guy here. This is the BQE Rip Squeak. This is a really, really good frame. Um, and then there's other ones like the Diatone Roma 35, uh, like this guy here. Recently, I was contacted by Rob from Ronin FPV, and he said, hey, do you want to take a look at my Ronin Mark II frame? I've seen the Mark I before. It looked like a really good design. I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? Take a look at it. And he sent me. Uh, the Ronin Mark II, and this is it. This little frame, you might be thinking, oh, it's a cute little three inch frame. No, this is a four inch frame. This is a four inch arm frame. I gotta mention, after talking to Rob over the internet a little bit, um, he's just an independent dude that has a real passion for, has a real passion for FPV, and this is his own design, his own creation. Not sure if he's cutting himself or if he's outsourcing the, uh, the cutting of the carbon fiber but this frame is very well designed and I'll tell you why. Uh, previous to this, one of my favorite frames was this one, the BQE Rip Squeak. This little guy here, this is a this is a three inch frame. The BQE Rip Squeak frame is a pretty light frame. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of carbon fiber. You have a base plate, uh, two arms, a couple little sandwich plates, and a top plate, and that's about it. There's not much to it. This looks like a Rip Squeak, but like a rip squeak plus almost it's bigger arm so this will swing a four inch prop um, and not only does it have just a base plate and a top plate in the arms the arms are boomerang arms so they add a little bit of rigidity to them um, but it also has a like a lower sandwich plate to i don't know maybe maybe help absorb some of that that crushing force if you hit an arm um, it does feel like the arms will break pretty much right here that's kind of where you want them to break in a crash um, nothing fancy, no chamfered edges or anything like that to drive the cost up. But this frame clocks in at 54 grams. It's not the lightest, it's not the heaviest, but I think it strikes a good balance between weight and durability. Whereas you look at something like the this guy here, this is a Diatone Roma 3.5. So this is a three and a half inch frame. Super fancy carbon fiber with all the chamfered edges and all the, the CNC goodness. But this frame's a pig. This frame weighs in at about 75 grams. That is a ton for a little three and a half inch quad, especially when you're trying to get to that sub 250 mark. Some of the really neat features about this frame is, yes, it does use the boomerang arm, so it's it's a, you know, you break one, you break two type thing, which eh, yeah, it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> it does support a 16 by 16, a 20 by 20, and a 25 uh, whoop size flight controller. And in the back, in the trunk where all the junk goes, uh, we can mount a 16 by 16 or a 20 by 20 stack, flight controller, VTX, whatever it is you want to put in the back, uh, an air unit, a, um, uh, a shark bite system, whatever it is that you want to throw in there. Uh, it has the space. The front camera mount, pretty neat little design. It's just a straight slot. You put the camera wherever you want and you just slide it back and forth try to get the front of the carbon fiber out of frame and also try to protect your lens at the same time. Uh, this does have quite a snout on it, having that that uh, split deck design. It does have a bit of a snout on it, so this should offer some pretty decent camera protection up in the front there. Um, now, one of the downsides I've seen to the boomerang arms is if you look at how the carbon fiber is cut, it's not perfectly straight down the arm, and that's because of the fact that these arms aren't 90 degrees. They're, uh, you know, they're more of an uh, obtuse angle. So you do have to have that compromise when you're cutting the carbon fiber. 
whether to split the difference and just have the strands long running as long as possible versus just straight down the middle. This whole frame comes very well packaged. Uh, this dude, you you can tell by opening the package what you see inside that he does have a very passionate. Uh, he does have a lot of passion for what he's designed here and his product, his his baby, his design. Uh, lots of extras in the box. I don't know if that's just because he sent it to me, but um, he kind of made it sound like this is exactly what you get when you buy retail, not just like a review sample. Um, a lot of cool stuff in there, patches, Lipo straps. One thing that I did notice is there is an awful lot of waste in the, in the packaging. Um, you know, the way things are right now, we got to worry about actually having a green outdoor to go fly in, having a decent world to fly in. And, uh, and there is a ton of plastic waste. Look at this. Every single piece of cut carbon fiber was in its own bag. It does come with some extra hardware. I did strip out a screw uh, while installing the arm, so it was nice to have an extra screw or two uh, in case you do uh, really reef down on them and strip them out. It comes with the nut inserts pre-installed in the base plate, which is always a plus because those things, they seem to really confound a lot of people. And I've seen a lot of really messed up builds because people try to pull them in with a, a bolt and a washer. Um, and it just, it just doesn't go well unless they're pressed in from the factory. So thank you for that. He does have all the STLs for putting like a crossfire antenna or uh, arm skids and stuff like that on his website very good website um, probably one of the better FPV websites and on another note if this is like one of your first builds I really think that this might be the way to go he has documented every bit of the build process which parts to use and how to tune and set everything up uh, that's something that's missing from just about every manufacturer out there this is very very important information that uh, a lot of people get confused when they start to build their first quad like Putting the nuts and bolts together, yeah, that's great. But how do you make it fly right? He has the whole tuning process on his website, and I think he even has just straight up beta flight presets that you can flash to this thing. So that is a huge benefit of the this frame, this company, and the time that has been put into it. Uh, I can't say how detailed this is. It is crazy detailed. Very, very detailed. So, you know, I look at a lot of frames, I, I get a lot of bind and flies and things like that. And um, right now my favorite, my favorite kind of sub 250 quad to fly is this one. This is the Baby Hawk HD. It's, you know, it's just a great all rounder. It's super fun to fly, uh, but I'm pretty sure that this is going to be something that I'm gonna build up here in the near future and uh, put through its paces. I really like this frame. I am a little skeptical about how well the m2 hardware will hold up i hate m2 hardware in just about every scenario other than holding a camera in place um, they do tend to strip out very easily both the heads and the threads tend to strip pretty easily but um, the heads can be mitigated by just using good drivers if you're looking for a good set of drivers in the video description i have a link to these these are mippy drivers these are the paragon of hex drivers. I know they look old school and not very good, but trust me, these are the ones you want. All right, folks, sound off down below. What do you think of this frame? Do you think this is a good contender for a good four inch frame, a good sub 250 frame? Say the heck with the whole sub 250 thing, run what you brung, slap a big old GoPro on it and hope for the best. Remember, the lighter you make it, the more it's gonna survive when it crashes or the higher the chances are. You got less kinetic energy smacking the old concrete. The, it passes all the checks in the beginning. It passes all the preliminary checks. Hey, is it easily serviceable? Yup. Is this one e easily? Is this one easily? Is this one easily serviceable? Hell no. Get rid of that thing. It's uh, what I like about the BQ Europe Squeak. Super easily serviceable. There's only a few parts to it, uh, and if you you break one, it's it's like one or two screws to repair it. None of the arms share stack screws. That is always a bonus. If you ever find a frame that the arm screws share the stack screws, yeah, you know what? That one probably should go and uh, not be an option. Um, just from a serviceability aspect, there's no reason you need to do it unless like they're pulling off some super new trick design thing. Um, otherwise, there's not really a whole lot of reason for it. All right, guys, well, that's it. Let me know what you think. And as always, folks, stay positive and uh, go out and rip. See you next time.